Welcome to Towards a Smarter World. This is your host, Cruz Saunders, and I'm pleased to be joined today by the Director of Unified Content Services, Kelly Lowitz at Genetech. She leads a team of content developers, editors, operations specialists, taxonomists, translation coordinators that are all responsible for the creation and delivery of high quality technical content across lots of different channels, getting that message out to Genetech's customers, partners, and employees. Kelly and Genetech started their taxonomy journey in 2021 when a lack of consistent product and business terminology was identified at a risk to digital transformation efforts that were a high priority for the company. Kelly's been leading the charge, and it's great to get to connect with her today. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Chris. Well, thanks very much for joining us. You, we've been connected for some time, and it's great to now get to share with our listeners some of the business programs and the progress you've been leading in unified content services. Unified content is something we've been talking about at A for a long time. And in many organizations, it's not a function. So it's very exciting that there is even a function for unified content at Genetech. And your portfolio is huge. Would you give listeners a sense of the scope of unified content and what your mandate is there? Yeah, I think I probably stole the title of the department from, from A, probably got the idea from you, but it's aspirational. So you're right, we do have a very large mandate. We take care of technical documentation and the translation of technical documentation and all and everything around that. But there's this other part of, of us, which started with technical content, but we always had the aspiration to unify because we always knew that everyone's creating content. And that operations part, the operational services, we could extend those to other organizations and actually help them create content better, deliver content better, author content better, translate content better. So that was that was built in, that was part of our vision, my vision from the very start, but we didn't always have that. We built towards that. Starting with, uh, in terms of unified content services, the first unified content service that we provided was translation. We offered a translation management platform where we could receive and manage translations from all across the company. So we could see what we were translating, we could leverage our memory, et cetera. So we started on that, not necessarily on content, but on the translation of content. And we've extended it into terminology. How can we help not only people in technical content, but people across the enterprise creating content be consistent around their terminology. So, you know, start with a vision. That's what we did. We started with a vision. We had our aspirations and we built a strong technical documentation and operations team based on DITA. And then we were able to extend that to the rest of the organization. So yeah, it's been fun, lots of fun. <laughs> Well, it's it's a it's a big job to to begin to expand the role of orchestrating content from function to function, and I love that you're starting with language in its in its root form as one of the ways to do that. Um, you know, there's there's a lot that a centralized organizational function around content can do in in a busy enterprise with with lots of channels. But you've started with terminology and with language, and it's really important that there's shared language in an enterprise, but it's pretty rare that, that there is. And, and so that, that concept of, of shared terminology and terminology operations is new to a lot of folks. Can you describe a little bit about what you see as terminology operations and why it's important for organizations to care about using terms in the same way from group to group? Well, you know, the opportunity at Genetech, I've been talking about terminology and consistent terminology is actually part of our, our goals, our, uh, the, you know, one of the pillars of our organization. So we've been talking about it for a long time, but suddenly it hit the business cruise and suddenly the executive identified that the lack of common language, the lack of managed terminology was a problem. And it was a problem, not necessarily in the content level, but it was hitting them as they were trying to transform their, their data systems, their business systems, because you're merging 
system data together and it has to be in a single flow. And if you're not calling, if a customer doesn't meet a customer across the systems, you're going to have problems. So that's where that need came, came from. And from there, we had always been talking about it. We did it within our own organization, but we needed to scale, right? We need to provide a service to the entire organization. And that was where terminology ops came from. So we needed to build a process and, well, actually we need the people, the processes and the systems and technology to be able to support the need across the organization. So that's where it came from. And that's what we do. Hmm. And for somebody that, that hasn't considered terminology before, what, what would you say are some of the most important reasons to consider looking into developing a, a shared terminology program? Well, it comes back to common language <laughs> and whether you're, for whatever reason that you're creating content or exchanging data, if you don't have that common language, then that's the first step. You can't get any further. And the bigger, the bigger you become, the more, the dip, whether we're talking about your organization, so your, your teams, your employees, or your customer base, or your products, when it's small and you know everyone and everyone knows the products and you can coordinate at a very small level with very minimal coordination, it's almost tribal, that's fine. But as you grow, if you don't have that common language at a cultural level, but also at a systems level, at a content level, at every level, uh, you're gonna you're gonna face problems. It's gonna cost you money. It's gonna cost you customers. Bottom line, there's a saying. What was his name? Clay Christensen, and this is old. It's an old like Harvard Business Review, and he was talking about he was talking about innovation, and you know he said expectations for value and satisfaction are set at the big hire, but they're measured and calculated at that little hire. You know the big hire is when someone decides to buy. And the little hire is when someone decides to use, and then they resubscribe, they renew. And content and terminology is about that little hire. It's that experience. And if you're not consistent with that experience, they will not renew. You won't get more customers. Um, so that's, that's, um, that's where I see terminology fitting in. And that's where I see terminology and managing your terminology as, as very valuable to the business. Yeah, no, that's very compelling. It's tied very much to the the essential customer experience and bringing that together uh, pre and post sales. It's continuity. If you always have to, uh, if if you have to spend your time wondering if something was a mistake or if it means something, and this this is really from people to systems, then that's you know time is money. Uh, time is customers. Customers can go somewhere else. Employees can go somewhere else. Employees will spend a lot of time trying to figure out what the right thing is to do. What is the right word to use? Translators will spend a lot of time mistranslating. So it's 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 a little higher and it's the little things, the little little frictions that cause uh, that's caused you know in in the processes that people follow or in the processes that systems follow that can really bite you if you don't get it right, especially as you start to grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Um, you know, as AI starts taking on more role in, in content generation, having consistent terminology also uh, becomes the basis for sort of training. Yep, uh, absolutely. Consistent output as well, yeah. And we have a lot of content. I'm, uh, that's something uh, actually we're going to start looking into, but that's, that's also, it's, it's the, you can do so many things once you get it right or almost right. Well, you know, a, a lot of these kinds of programs don't get off the ground due to budget constraints and uh, really they have huge value, but they're, often really flying under the radar of the sea level. I'm curious about how you've been able to get sponsorship uh, for these initiatives and, and uh, what, what, what has been key triggers for, for executives to really drive their involvement. Well, I, you know, it's a, it's a continuous, it's not a struggle. It's just, you, you have to keep at it, but at Genetech, you know, as we mentioned in the intro, there was it was identified at the beginning. We had been talking about it. I had been talking about it. I've been talking to various people in the organization, 
but it's only when it was identified as a threat, as a threat to us being able to transform because it was causing a lot of friction, a lot of, a lot of time was wasted either fixing systems because we didn't have that consistent terminology or having you know these confusing conversations which didn't allow uh, transformation to move forward so you know the executive felt it and the executive needs to feel something they need to feel it it's going to hurt their bottom line hurt their brand etc so there were plenty of examples that I had where the executives were speaking to that, the need for the common language, the need for us to have a consistent experience, whether you were talking about the sales experience or the product experience. So I reminded them and I said, okay, that's well and good, but how do we do that? How, how do we deliver that? And this is coming back to there's big things in terms of how we deliver that. And then there's smaller things. And so because they, they had their, um, they suddenly understood. I had been talking to them for like really cruise many years <laughs> about this and the, and the risk. But when they finally encountered that, they remembered that we had been speaking about that. Um, our organization had demonstrated, you know, process maturity, et cetera. So they, they came to us and they said, can you help? And we said, yes, we can. But it hasn't... Uh, it, we started small we're and we're still I would say we're still relatively small and we haven't um, we will continue to extend so there's a problem the executives see there's a problem you're ready to address that problem you don't have all the answers but you're able to deliver something of value in a short period of time that shows the benefit of continuing that shows that that truly shows the strategic benefit of putting more money in terminology. I say that that's what I would recommend, you know, that's how we did it anyways. And we're continuing to do that. It's, um, it's ongoing. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense? Be, it does. It's good. It's not a, it's not a vitamin, right? It's a, no. it's a, it's a painkiller. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, good. And, and, and you've rolled out a pretty comprehensive program, even with a limited budget. And I'm curious about you know, how you describe the shape of that program and what, what are all the components? I know it included tools and standards and some team structure and best practices, a very comprehensive approach. Uh, can you, can you describe, you know, the elements and, and why they're important? Yeah. Um, where did we start? Like we, we didn't do it all at once, right? We started first by hiring for this program is basically identifying the problem, we worked with you guys actually to come up with a, a roadmap, get the right people in place, and then and then start pick something. Don't pick everything. Pick something small, right? We we really took an agile approach. Pick a small term set, something that everyone understood that it was problematic, but it wasn't too problematic, where we could actually and sandbox that and start to play, start to figure out how what is a term, how do you define a term. How does a term fit in a taxonomy? Who's responsible for reviewing and approving? Sandboxing that, experimenting, getting the process in order, getting having the people in place, and then running it again and again, and going back and getting feedback. So with a small set of terms, and then you start to extend it. And that's where we went from a, a project, a POC, into term ops, terminology operations, because we put the people and processes in place. We introduced a technology to help us deliver all those decisions that we made to where people author in line in real time. And then we started to extend, extend our reach. The amazing thing is when you start to do something well, but also when you start to do it consistently, people start asking you to have for help. People start asking you to do work because you've demonstrated with a small set, nothing, nothing, nothing burnt down, the stakes weren't as high, but then you demonstrated that you had that, that process in place and that you could guarantee that that process would deliver an approved term into a system that's accessible by everyone. And people start asking you to help them manage their terms. You know, we've had, um, as we rolled out this program, and we continue to demonstrate what we've done and continue to receive feedback and improve, you know, we've had legal come to us. We've had uh, other business units come to us and ask about how we can manage their terms, how we can help 
uh, bring consistency and really help the authors, whoever is managing and authoring that content, uh, be better, go faster, et cetera. Terrific. And part of that has been information sharing, like getting groups of people together to talk. Um, can you can you tell us a little bit more about how that process of of really socializing terminology um, and and re- reinforcing with with best practices? How that yeah, works. we ha- like we started as part of our POC. We started with a like I said, we started with products product names and we created a small a small group with product managers um everyone who dealt with with product uh, bid content etc what is it? it was product managers marketing bid training unified content services and what was really amazing is that uh people attended these groups because they were interested they were, we identified a need right at the beginning so the C-suite said, oh my God, our systems can't talk to each other because we don't have a common language around our business terms. But our authors were also saying, because we were creating more and more content, oh my God, I spent so much time trying to figure out what the right term is to use. And there's so many iterations, reviews. So these people came together. They were, they were, they had a vested interest in seeing that this, that we figure out the process and we figure out how to manage our terms. And we were very consistent. We set up a Friday meeting. And that Friday meeting always happened. And we would we would bring people up to speed on what we've done in that small group. And then we would get their feedback on processes that we were trying, automations we were trying, the review and approval plot process. And then the next week we would come back, we take their feedback, we come back and we'd improve it. So that, that weekly touch point with that small group of people who are part of our MVP, and then also making sure that we deliver on the suggestions or the improvements. So continuously improving that process, then sharing it out with the rest of the organization. We have, uh, we have this forum where we can basically broadcast to the company what we're doing. And so we did that after we run this project for six months, we had the process in place and we shared that out and we were able to deliver it. We had a place where people could actually check their terms. So that's really important uh, that I would emphasize no matter, you know, big or small that you focus on being able to deliver value as soon as possible. As soon as, it might, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be complete, but you're delivering value. It's not shelfware. It's not a guide. It's not some reference. It's really in line, in real time. They can use it. They can feedback. They can improve it. Your user base. So, so we did that. And, uh, and then we just continue to iterate that same, that same process. Do something. Go back to this user group. More and more people are starting to, you know, be part of that user group. Feedback, you know, with that user group, give them, you know, whether it's engagement stats or terminology consistency or review process, whatever, whatever is part of the process, feedback to that group, ask them if they're satisfied, ask them where we can improve and then improve. Yeah, that's beautiful. There's rhythms, there's listening, there's feedback cycles, and um, and, and they're, they're seeing value uh, through tangible outputs. What about the systems that help to support all of that? Um, the, the the systems for terminology management and and we went small. Record. Yeah, yeah, we went small. So there, you can start small. Start small with everything. Uh, you can always, and you know, the smaller you start, the more agile the system of record that you use, the better, because you can move. But we start. We started with what we had. We used what we had. So uh, we had SharePoint. People were, uh, I think it's called SharePoint Term Store. People were adding their their terms to SharePoint Term Store. Uh, but there was no governance around that. So we, we took that over. Uh, people were aware who managed their SharePoint sites, in particular product, uh, product management. They were aware of that. And so we started to use the SharePoint uh, Term Store as a system of record. But it has its limitations. The limitations were that it's available for tagging in SharePoint, but it wasn't available. It wasn't helping our authors. So then we uh, we looked for a, um, a system that could actually manage our terminology, but also deliver that terminology to where people are authoring. And so we went with Acrolinks and used them to deliver our terminology. But it's not 
you know, this answer that this answer that I'm giving you is not clear cut because it's not clear cut right now. We don't have one system, we don't have that one system of record, if I were to like really be honest. We have SharePoint Term Store and then we have Acrolinks. Things come through Acrolinks and then they go into SharePoint Term Store. But that that process of managing, I guess, the different channels in which our our terminology needs to be published to is not ironed out entirely. We're still working on that. Yeah. There's a lot, there, there's a lot of manual stuff still happening, Cruz. Well, of course. And, and you know what? But it's what very, like... sorry, sorry to interrupt, but it's just, it's really important that you, so you, you may have, like we have SharePoint and we had Acrolinks. So you acknowledge that. But before we had 10, everyone was keeping their terms everywhere else. And so fine, we can't get to one system, system um, this authoritative source, this system of record, but we got down to three and we know them. We know what's going in them. We can see them, we get notifications. So that was very important and to communicate that, to say, this is iterative. You know, we're continuously improving and evolving this service. So that was, uh, that was important because sometimes when you're looking at this project, you're like, we need a system of record. We need, you know, it must be that. And that's where that's where you can, all those must have, must be's uh, with regards to technology and, you know, can trip you up. I think be very flexible around there would be my, uh, would be my guidance. Well, yeah, it's practical and it's available within the current context of of technology without you know huge uh, initial investments. And I think we've seen semantics programs to start with kind of the centralized approach, but it in every case it always takes iteration anyway, mm -hmm. right? So there's there's going to be an iterative cycle to mature the understanding of how terminology is used and and then the consensus and group dynamics around shared terminology so it's really it's a iterative process not just technically but of course within the culture and the environment Absolutely. And the process right so um so the there's a a movement towards more and more semantics maturity um you know semantics being the kind of bigger um, uh, you know, world of of interconnected taxonomies. When when we start to move from just having kind of terms in space or a dictionary to relating those terms into to relating those terms into ta taxonomies, and then we start relating the taxonomies into something that you know uh, semantics nerds would call an ontology. Right? We have uh, more, uh, you know, really a domain of knowledge being mapped out and that becomes more and more and more useful over time but it starts what i love about what you're doing is you're it starts in the blocking and tackling of you know real life systems that are being used in the enterprise today with teams that need to see immediate value and you're moving the ball towards sharing a, a, a process and technology around terms with an eye towards the bigger picture. Kelly, with all of these different uh, terminology starters that are in place, there is a lot of fundamental uh, basis for more maturity in the future. I'm curious what you see ahead. Well, the possibilities are limitless, Chris. <laughs> the possibilities are limitless, whether we're using, whether with this consistent terminology and consistent content, we're, we're able to leverage our content in machine translation, in machine learning, in, uh, you know, better connected systems. So all those, all those systems that require consistency in order to be able to build, you know, the rules, the automation, et cetera, but also all those people who require consistency. But we're still at the beginning. We're still really focusing on, on building that terminology, getting it down pat, going from a chaotic way of managing or not managing our terms to a repeatable process for managing our terms. We're actually looking at culture change, right? So there's that, there's the big thing and how, how once we've changed the culture around how we see and use terminology, 
then whatever systems need to do, we're ready. But right now we're still focused on, on the people and the processes and making sure that those things and what we deliver is organized and repeatable. We're not at that technology piece right now, but in order to be able to plug into that technology piece, we need this, this consistency and process worked out first. Yeah. Terrific. Cause that, yeah, that is the foundation. And uh, once you've got the ingredients, you can make lots of recipes in the future and whether that's yeah, a good search analogy. engine optimization or whether that's uh, you know, a semantic search on the website or whether that's uh, more personalized targeted experiences based on the terminology on in the and it's interesting layer. Yeah. it's interesting who so all of that you know that demand hasn't come into into our service yet but what's always interesting and you can you kind of you can see what the organization is thinking is the questions the people who attend our our um our information sessions, the people who attend our service delivery reviews, the types of questions that they ask. They're not asking for anything. They're not, they're not adding something and saying this must be delivered, but they're just they're they're probing, they're asking questions and they're 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 bringing up all the possibilities and they're excited about it. So it's always interesting and I always use that uh, to to figure out the future and where we're going by the questions that I get in those show and tells that we do. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, you've got engagement, which is enormous. Um, so let's let's start by let's start to wrap up by looking at the 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 ways that people who are brand new to yep. terminology management and they don't have any kind of program in place right now and they just want to get started. Um, where you know should they start and what are some sort of initial best practices they can they can start considering the first thing depending on how much budget you have is you know manage and build what you control so if you're a small uh, technical writing organization how do you manage your terms within your organization do you have organized and repeatable processes are they documented? You know, do you deliver do you deliver terminology cons consistently? Could you demo what you do to a larger organization and start to get budget? So, you know, within your organization, make sure that you understand what a term is, what term management is, and then start to just practice it. We have a new term. What is the definition? We need to change this definition. Uh, how do we do that? So, so capturing that process and then starting to extend it out to other organizations. One of the things that we did, just because we did have some buy-in at the C-suite, meaning that they didn't necessarily understand, you know, they weren't hot on, it wasn't the hot thing, but but they it made them feel, it made them worried, right? So, so we did have some buy-in at the C-suite level because they understood the risk because they were experiencing it in what they did. So that's around business systems. But I, I worked, well, I worked with Simple A and I said, okay, I really want to understand how, if you can work with someone, a, a consultant in that business and start to develop your roadmap, which is what I did. I found that I found working with you guys very helpful in terms of building that roadmap and that understanding. So building that vision, you know, coming up with your uh, strategy and your objectives for short-term, mid-term and long-term were very helpful because they were very concrete. And because you don't have an organization, let's be honest, not everyone understands or understands all the time. They might be worried about it at a certain time, but then it goes away and they're they're worried about something else, but that, that risk still remains. Uh, because you, that's always changing and you're having to constantly address that, having that, that concrete plan. So a, a very strong vision, your strategy and objectives for the near term, and then really focusing on delivering that is where you should start. And you don't need a consultant to do that. You know, you could, you can start small within your organization and saying, what is my vision? What am I trying to do? What problems am I trying to solve? And then work your way through that and focus on delivering. And then, and then show and tell. Like, there's a lot of marketing crews. Uh, I won't. I won't kid you, and I won't kid the audience. You have to. Uh, you're wearing all hats, 
as you as you try to roll out uh, this type of program. You have well, to have excellent. a good market strategy. You have to <laughs> you have to have engagement. You have to have you have to measure your customer engagement. It's um, there's a lot of sales involved in rolling out this program, and you need to be ready to do it. And you've done it. You've done it. And that is absolutely enormous. There's, uh, there's a lot of people in the content industry who are needing to see what leadership looks like, and you're demonstrating it. Leadership looks like getting something rolling, getting the advocacy for that built within an organization through uh, rhythms, through bringing people together, through demonstrating results, through tangible outcomes that are built on a identified strategy that can be communicated upward and within peers. So it is a lot of work, but that ultimately pays off in something that is going to live really for a very long time as the foundation for intelligence and the future of content and customer experience. So that is huge. And I look forward to hearing more about how all of these program elements get anteed up into a more intelligent future um, at Genetech and in your leadership career. So thanks so much, Kelly. It's exciting times ahead. It sure is. Thanks for sharing your wisdom with the audience. We really appreciate it. And My pleasure. everybody enjoy taking one step at a time towards a smarter world. This episode of Towards a Smarter World is brought to you by A, the Content Intelligence Service. Learn more about intelligent customer experience powered by content strategy, engineering, and operations at simpleA.com.